The new buzzword is sustainability, and I would argue that as farmers and food producers, we've been sustainable for generations, if not centuries, because the goal is to uh, leave our land base in as good a shape or better for the next generation than what we received it. My husband and I have been raising beef for the last 40 years, and I think it's important to recognize that people are more aware of what they're eating. We've had many, many conversations about healthy food, and healthy food is raised on healthy land. The public has an increasing interest in the environmental impact of the cattle industry, just like they have an increasing interest in the environmental impact of just about every aspect of food production. It's important to do research on things like this simply because the questions are out there and having reliable, honest, fact-based answers for this is hugely important. We looked at the carbon footprint of beef production in Canada and we compared that from 1981 to 2011. We found that the industry had increased the efficiency to the point of about 15% reduction in, in greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we produced the same amount of beef with about 25% less land. So there's a lot of efficiencies that have taken place over that period of time which really represent the adoption of science by the industry, the changes in management practices by the industry and uh, improvements in crop production and yield by the industry. Most of our land is native grassland that's never been cultivated. Our cattle do graze all winter, most winters. We consider ourselves cattle people, but the product is largely grass, and we're trying to turn that into something of value. And of course, as science progresses, we can see more and more things that we do that can be harmful or, or things that can be beneficial if we're smarter about it. We live off this land, and uh, if we destroy it, it destroys our living and ourselves. The biggest myths in beef production related to the environmental impact for me would be the perception that we as farmers are still farming in the 1950s. Uh, we're not. Genetics have improved. The quality of the feeds that we use, how we feed them and deliver them to the livestock has changed. We're much more efficient than we were 50 years ago. We're much more efficient than we were five years ago. Here in our farm, we have a nutrient management plan which we follow through on our manure production and, and application on our crop side. Ontario has an environmental farm plan. We keep that up to date, as well as technologies in our feeding program that can help produce less manure and yet still produce uh, efficient, high-quality beef. The changes that we've made here started as soon as we bought the place, whether it would be to change the rotational grazing or to provide clear, clean water sources. Off-site water always. Does it create some challenges? Absolutely. Uh, does it cost money? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Feed efficiency and sustainability are very tightly linked. Of course, feed costs are the number one cost of production for producers and it uses a lot of inputs as well. By trying to maximize your feed efficiency and use those feed nutrients to the best of the ability for the animal, you can see an overall improvement in sustainability and overall productivity and operation. There's certainly some simple things producers can do. For example, uh, in the feedlot, most producers will know their cost of gain. Another example would be from the cow-calf area, just keeping track of the amount of weight that a cow would wean in a year is a measure of efficiency. Keeping track of those type of things will enable a producer to make some changes. We need to make sure that we're doing the most we can with the land we have available and continue to increase beef production with the limited resources that we do have. I think it's important to stay up on technology and research because it's always leading us to a more profitable industry and at the same time using less resources to do it. Environmental stewardship plays a big part in our operation here. We tie our beef operation in with our cash crop enterprise here. We do soil sampling of all our land every three years. We do manure sampling of our manure and we match that up when we're applying manure. So our land doesn't get too many of the nutrients which could cause nutrient runoff. At this particular farm, what we're doing that's important is we're fencing our cattle out of our swamps and creeks so we're not contaminating the water supply and we're keeping them out of the bush as well for the longevity of the bush. So another initiative that we want to do here is we want to rotationally graze our cattle on this farm so we're putting more cattle on less acres, more efficient, but also what we're doing is we're giving the land a rest as well so that it can rejuvenate itself before we put cattle back on.
Grasslands that are not grazed are not healthy. Grazing encourages plant growth. It, it can increase the level of biodiversity within those grazing systems. It can also reduce the amount of invasive plants that can enter in that. All of that though does involve having proper grazing management practices. The healthier the grass, the healthier the water, the, the healthier our animals are. I'm a fourth generation rancher. My kids and my nephews will, will hopefully be the fifth. Every generation has learned something and added to it. We're managing our grass to be more productive and we're managing it in a way that makes our cows more efficient. We've gone to smaller fields and, and larger herds. We're impacting land in a shorter time and it has longer to recover. And that just rolls on to making our business more profitable and more sustainable. There are things that cattle producers can do to reduce their environmental impact, and that's keeping their grass healthy, making sure that their nutritional requirements of their animals are being met, keeping their vaccinations and whatnot up to date so that each calf born ends up getting weaned and turning into beef. Places that have streams or water running through them, there's things that those producers can do to help maintain a healthy riparian habitat. And those things benefit the environment, obviously, but they also benefit the producer. Our intention is to leave it better than we found it. I think it's important to recognize that it doesn't just happen. You, you keep learning, you keep collaborating, you keep talking, and you work with other people. You work with scientists and botanists, and I can't say enough about the people that we talk to. The environmental impact of the beef produced in Canada is much smaller than it is in many other countries around the world and has very strong environmental benefits. Producers should be really proud of how far they've come in terms of environmental impact and sustainability. We love our cattle, we love our land, but if we don't do it in an effective manner, it's not profitable and sustainable. I think it's important to help people recognize the importance of the land and the importance of this kind of a place that produces healthy food. This is where good food is raised.